while a lot of people actually have good things to say about Nigeria, some others, you know, feel like uh, Nigeria hasn't given them what they deserve. But aside from that, it's actually now time for us to talk on the way forward. You know, way forward Nigeria at 63. How can we move Nigeria to a better place or to the promised land as promised 63 years ago? And uh, right now we have our guest, uh, you know, to talk on this. We have Chukuma. Yes, indeed. Chukuma Kenwa is here to talk about that. Chukuma, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, we're looking at the way forward as far as Nigeria uh, is concerned. Um, as far as you are concerned, what are the biggest opportunities that lie ahead for this beautiful country called Nigeria for the next five to ten years? That would be first to take a critical, analytical look at the past to understand why, despite 63 years, in this journey of independence, we cannot really be able to say that it's been what's the essence. You know, the past offers a great opportunity because if you can review and learn from the mistakes of the past, then you can, it can influence the right actions for the present. And of course, it is the right actions we take in the present that will influence the future. And when you look at the key major areas, in terms of nation building, whether you are talking about governance and rule of law, vis-a-vis -vis also like the, the issue of the electoral processes and the transparency, the issue of judiciary on one hand, economy and entrepreneurship, and the United get to education, health, and everything that means well for human development index. You will quite agree with me that if we look at numbers, and not just maybe based on wishes or things that may be prayers that we hope that someday Nigeria will be good. You can actually agree with me that things are far worse in terms of numbers than when we first set out for this particular journey. And so, but I also want to observe something which is very important and that we mean perhaps the nation is really rethinking its own future. That at least for the past 13 years, 11 out of the 13 celebration has been like solemn reflection. The government of the day never saw the need to throw like a fanfare, but more or less like a national thinking and reflection there. And that's what it ought to be. 63 years, it's not just what, what's being clapping. It's just like, you know, concluding that a marriage is successful because two people has endured themselves for the past 30 years. So I think this, it's a time to really reflect and ask ourselves, how far have we gone in this journey of nationhood? Where have we missed it? What can be done a lot better? All right, uh, Chukuma. Now, after six decades, uh, Nigeria's young and innovative citizens are still waiting for, you know, their parents and grandparents' dreams of a prosperous Nigeria. Now, um, what do you think is the distance between the aim of those who actually fought for independence and also the life that the Nigerians actually live at the moment. In all honesty, what we see currently is direct opposite of what our founding fathers stood for. We saw a unity that knew no bounds. A people that, that they had the opportunity at that very first instance for everyone to go separate ways. But the likes of uh, 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 Nandi Aziki with them, Awolowo, they came together and said, well, we are better together as one stronger united nation. And they made it, they laid it upon themselves that if we build on the ideals of recognizing our differences, how be it valuing it for national transformation, there won't even be any need for anybody to talk about dividing Nigeria. In fact, it was made a criminal offense for anybody at any point to raise up the issue of dividing the country. You know, but it's really sad that after several years that that was made, there were those times when Nigerians live without some of those lines. But it's really sad that at 63, we still have ethnic bigotry, we have hatred, we have religion dividing us as a people, rather than like focusing on issues of 
you know, regional prosperities and, of course, regional integration, the former kind of competition that we have when we truly had a federal system, where like the federated units were more powerful than the center. When we truly had a constitution that was that of the people and not like the 1999 constitution, where you just have like a few drafting ratified by the military and then of course it becomes the law for the people and up to now it's not been ratified. So I think that all that our founding fathers stood for, it's what exactly our life directly uh, conflicts with at the moment. Those unity they stood for, those prosperity and progress, the faith. So I think our generation can do better in terms of providing credible leadership, selfless leadership, like we saw in the lives of our founding fathers. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chikuma. We have uh, Ferdinand Ladia Adimefe also joining us as well. Ferdinand, thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks, thanks for having me. Yes, yes, thank you. Chikuma has told us that we need to also look at the past be, to be able to determine what the opportunities in the future uh, are. So uh, as far as you're concerned, as Nigeria celebrates its 63rd uh, independence anniversary, uh, what are the key lessons and achievements that the nation can mm -hmm. reflect upon? Uh, and how can these lessons shape Nigeria's path forward into the future? Well, I, I think that, quite frankly, there is um, there is uh, many things to be uh, unhappy about as there are things to be happy about. And I would like to dwell on some of the things I think we should celebrate. Um, 63 years on, we have um, a democracy that has gone through all types of challenges. And even while we see, we'll say we don't have a perfect system, I still think there is a consistent improvement um, from what we are seeing. I, I have very, very strong belief that we are in very interesting political seasons and economic times. We have one of the highest unemployment uh, ratio ever, but I still see a lot of things on ground that would help a lot of young people in the next few um, years to see opportunities. I know we have a lot of Nigerians who have left the country, but I still see that there are lots of people who are still very, very resilient and they are still building here. Um, from fintech to e-commerce to health tech to education, young Nigerians are creating. And these are despite the challenges that are in the environment. And I do think that we have to also see what to do with these ones to encourage that type of spirit, right? So my, my, my reflections in Nigeria is to really, really look at the part that we need to celebrate. We've always talked about what is not working. We, we know that the insecurity, all of those things are very much with us. But in spite of this, my true heroes for this um, independence celebration are the young ones who choose to stay back. Those who are against all odds pushing it. When you talk about Afrobeat today, uh, you look at the entertainment industry, Afrobeat has become an export. Um, when you look at our talents, they are going everywhere. Um, and I think we need to really see if these ones are succeeding with respect to all the things that are facing us, how can we make that success possible for many Nigerians? And that's what my reflection on the successes are. And if there's a way forward, it's really about what can we do right to see that there are many more kids, many more Bonner boys, many more movie makers. I mean, we're looking at um, the, the new movie that came out, Black Boy. We're seeing a lot of um, a, a Nigerians on from stream platforms to um, movies to entertainment to fashion. I mean, truth be told, we, we, we must celebrate these ones. And I think that with this new administration and all that they are trying to put in place, we all need to just come alongside. You know, for me, I will always tell a lot of people there is, there is politics and there is governance. And we must understand that when the elections are over, politics is over, it's now time to govern. And the, 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 the citizens are, are all one and the same. I mean, you, you're no more Nigerian than I am. I'm no more Nigerian than you are. So how can we support the governments at every level, from the states to local government to federal level, to see that if they have dreams and they have aspirations, we don't just stand on the sidelines and criticize them, but we become participants and we become supporters in making those dreams come to life. And I think that's where most of us are moving towards. How can we become part of the force that can say, okay, you know what, this is the only country we have. It's not a perfect country, but it can be better. And how right. can we be part of those that can make it better? That is really the spirit of the, of right. the celebration. Uh, Ferdinand, you've actually said it, you know, uh, how can we move Nigeria forward? Now, I would, I would like to go back to you, Chukuma, if you're still there. 
Now, uh, despite Nigeria's richness in solid uh, minerals and also oil, we're still grappling with a lot of challenges, you know, talking about stagnant economies, talking about uh, failing infrastructure, rolling mm. blackouts, insecurity, and also corruption, you know. Uh, these actually continue to drive highly educated Nigerians to Japa, that's to, you know, leave and walk abroad as well. A lot of people are really, really skeptical. Now, in your honest opinion, would you say that uh, this administration's policies would, uh, or reforms would actually, would it help or harm Nigeria? Well, let me first and foremost say that owning resources is not enough, but of course the management, uh, we've seen how as a nation, we are victim of oil theft, crude oil theft, uh, theft of uh, solid minerals. Regrettably, that for years has been on report, clear intelligence that the uh, there's an illegal mine, mining going on in Zamfara of the gold. Yet this does not reflect in our GDP. We have illegal oil bunkering. So when you talk about like the economic template of the current administration, what we want to see is like our ability to look within and actually adapt whatever global economic policies we want to bring back to Nigeria with our own realities so that we can as a nation become very impactful. Now, what do I mean by that? When you want to have a situation like where you want to just remove all your subsidy, you know, in the manner with which what it was done, without like clear consideration of the impact on the citizen and how best it would have been done so that it's not going to like scatter the economy like practically we see that the economy is in a kamotas, kamotos and that the so-called palliative has done no nothing, nothing good at all because when you talk about like people that receive like two mudu of rice, how long can they eat that without compensate for all of the hardship, the suffering, the inflation? So what I expect, and when I'm talking about adopting policies to adapt in our current environment, would actually be to understand that as a nation blessed with oil, if we fix our refineries, it's really going to help. Now, there have been lots of arguments, you know, so like what I call textbook economists, right? Who tell you that even if Nigeria refines its own oil, it's not going to make any difference. It will still sell at the prevailing price. And I'm like, economics is as simple as ABC. Because guess what? Are you telling me that if I buy my food from a restaurant, it's going to be uh, uh, costlier or the same price with when I, I cultivate my own crops and I'm also able to cook my own food? Because Nigeria is like a kind of an auto in the, the, the whole value chain of oil. When you own the oil, you can't be reading the same textbook with some other nations that don't own the oil. They build it to refineries for you and ask you to bring it in. And of course, for you to export back the refined version, you still have to like import at the prevailing price. So they tell you that it's not going to make any difference because oil is an international commodity. But of course, well, the question we can actually ask ourselves is, for those of them that are in the Niger Delta, that do like uh, some of these modular refineries, right? Do they have to like export first and they sell it at a very cheap price, right? Because I mean, you don't have like any of those external forces playing out. And I also want to argue that if actually the refineries wouldn't do any good or any difference, I bet you our four refineries would have been functioning optimally. But of course the players and stakeholders who are in the sector has deliberately ensured that this doesn't function so that they are criminal enterprise beyond the shores of the country by refining our own oil there would continue. And Nigeria is the only okay. OPEC nation yeah. that depends in up to 95% yeah. right, Ch of imported fuel. Yes. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt. Because of time, we just want to just quickly uh, ask you a very important question. Um, I will start with you, and then I'll go to Ladi Ferdinand. Ladi, um, Nigeria is 63. In a matter of uh, seven years, Nigeria will be 70. Uh, looking ahead to Nigeria's 70th uh, independence, you know, if things continue as the all things being equal, we'll have two administrations, this one and the next. Um, what vision and goals should the nation set towards its 70th anniversary? 
to ensure a more prosperous Nigeria, to ensure a more uh, secure Nigeria, to ensure an equitable future for all Nigerian citizens. Uh, what visions and goals should the nation set? I think uh, beyond visions, four things I recommend certainly will be like, we need to strengthen our uh, anti-corruption and compliance policies. There's nothing as painful as when you see past administrations, whether at the state level, at the federal level, nobody is being proved. There's nothing that incentivizes corruption that when people uh, perpetrate corruption and they go scot-free, right? And even help to, when you see past presidents coming down to adv advise citizens on what they can do and the nation will be good, when they actually had the opportunities, failed opportunities. I mean, you don't change any nation through prayers or cheap talks. You talk about actually demonstrating your love by ensuring that integrity is sustained and that a corruption is punished. And then two, want to say like commitment to the rule of law. Rule of law means nobody is above the law, starting from Mr. President. I tell people, the president of Nigeria is no more Nigerian than I am, and is no more Nigerian than every other citizen. And the, the very much time that we begin to, you know, have this principle all across that it doesn't matter who you are, the constitution is supreme, the law is supreme. Once we sustain all of that, we are sure that, you know, we are going to make progress as a country. All right. And then three, we be like committing. Let me this thought, let me conclude with this third one: proper economic management, irrespective of no matter how rich you are as a nation or poor. Management is key if you must maximize your resources. All right, uh, Daddy. Now, uh, let's have your final thoughts on this just before we wrap up. Uh, how do you think, you know, uh, the country can move? What can leaders actually do to move the country forward? What can be done? I think, it's, I, I think we need to prioritize development of our young people. We can easily say we have 200 million people, and if they are not skilled, is not an advantage. So we need to invest massively in helping our young people to assess global opportunities to become viable and also to flourish. And education is also very important. I still think that our educational curriculum is very outdated. I would always never stop advocating that there is a need for us to update it, to bring the educational curriculum into the 21st century so we can compete with other countries. I also like to support my brother on the, on the part of anti um, the fighting corruption. We need, we need strong, strong um, and, and institutions not just strong men. We want to see our laws work. We want to be able to criminalize corruption and let people go to jail where they need to. Uh, I also think it's important we start to celebrate values so people will not be dr driven by scarcity, just the idea that they can keep stealing and get away with it. So I really do, do, do see the need for us to do that. Um, so quickly recapping again is investing in our young people, strengthen our education, and eradicate corruption, and we'll have a very proper, prosperous country in the next two um, eight years. Right. Very interesting uh, uh, contributions from you, Chuku, Chuku Maokewa, and of course, Ferdinand Ladi Adimefe, uh, talking about Nigeria ahead of uh, after its 63 years. Um, I hope that uh, we'll all be celebrating you know, in much grand style or more grand style uh, mm -hmm. the 64th anniversary of Nigeria's independence. Though the jury is out as to whether independence is worth celebrating, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, compared to colonialism. But thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys.